Well, the saying day late and a dollar short couldn't be more accurate after what happened yesterday <laughs> with all my technical issues, but uh, it actually worked out for the best. Ted got another day of camp observations in his belt, so it, in a way it works out. You know, it's weird. We, you know what we're going to talk about first, so get your popcorn. Um, me and Ted don't usually argue, but, you know, sometimes we say different sides of the same coin. So, uh, Ted, first of all, how you doing, man? Good. Can't complain. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Aaron. Glad you, we got our technical difficulties out of the way from yesterday and ready to chop it up. Talk about, uh, you know, camp today. Uh, interesting day for sure at camp. They all are. Uh, so I'm just excited. Just was trying to uh, figure out where uh, the show was here so I could uh, quote tweet it and just say, hey, we're live. But uh, there we go. Um, no, I'm excited to see you. Um and I uh, just wish you were out here for some of the practices, but maybe we'll get Me that going. Me too. I was talking to my mom about that the other day, and my brother. I'm like, yeah, I should go to 49ers practice. And my mom's like, but you still got to go on a plane. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's anxiety-ridden. They'd have to put me to bed or put me to sleep, put me in the cargo hold or something, and wish for the best. Yeah, so, of course, quarterback talk's been all the buzz. Big, big surprise, right? Color me shock. Yeah. Um, today based on your evaluation and a couple other people, it seemed like a pretty solid day. Uh, I mean, you had, uh, I think you had uh, Sam Darnold one, Trey Lance or Brock Purdy two, Trey Lance three. Um, they had a pretty good day the other day too. I thought, was that, was it Monday? I'm trying to think what day it was, but like you, you moved the ball period. Wasn't too great today, but overall, I mean, we talked offline or talked off air about Brock Purdy. You know, he's not quite back yet. Um, and and then Kyle kind of said it himself and and kind of acknowledged and pretty much made what you said true. Like uh, you know he's he's there. They have confidence he's going to be the guy, but you know he's definitely not who he was at the end of last year. How 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 has the experience been in camp so far? Watching all the quarterbacks and how much grief have you gotten for your honest opinions uh, for Brock Purdy <laughs> for all this for all this Brock Purdy uh, stands that just can't listen to any negative uh, critiques of our, our savior quarterback. Yeah. I mean, I, I keep telling people, look, I really like Brock. I just don't like the hyperbole around him. The QB wins thing, you know, it, oh, QB wins can be misleading, uh, especially when uh, you've got the, uh, you know, the best weapons group in the NFL. You've got a really solid line last year. You got the number one D last year and you got Kyle calling the plays so QB wins can be a little bit misleading, especially when, uh, you know, I like to say Brock played mostly bad and banged up Ds. So, um, you know, and then and then this training camp, I've been saying Purdy isn't back to his normal self. And people are like, oh, who's your source? Who's your source on that, Ted? And I'm like, hey, I've been to five freaking practices, now six. Like, I'm my own source, right? Come right, on. Right, Jesus. Not only that, but I've been sitting with like Raj, Rohan, Jesse, Ryan, Steph, you know, so like we all talk about what we saw and we all kind of, oh yeah, and, and you know, bounce things off each other. So it, like, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna say I couldn't figure it out myself, but definitely there's a lot of times when like one of us doesn't see something or one person sees one part and the other part sees another. And it helps to have as many groups, uh, sets of eyes there because you only have one angle there's no instant replay and there's no, uh, you know, super slow-mo and there's no uh, zoom, right? So, I mean, you know, basically it helps have a lot of sets of eyes and, and a lot of people to bounce ideas off. And uh, anyway, and then I was vindicated today when Kyle said basically like, yeah, Purdy's not back, but we're not worried. You know, he'll, he'll get there. He's the real deal. But, you know, he basically confirmed that Purdy is not, himself yet in camp of what he was in 2022 uh and i think and and, and that's fine you know i mean i wasn't expecting him to be 100 percent yet you know um it's just a, a lot of people a lot of reporters were kind of reporting things in a way that made it sound like he was like oh he you know and a lot of people i think confuse clear to practice with full go clear to play a game because yep. he is not ready to play a game yet period, point blank. So uh, he's getting better. You know, he he was probably the best QB on Tuesday. He was one of the better ones today. But I really think it's kind of like a dead heat. I mean, I think Darnold was the best Sunday. 
Lance was the get best Monday. Uh, two, you know, so the best day was probably Monday because Purdy was pretty decent Monday. Uh, uh, Donald was second, and Lance was the best. And then like Tuesday, when um, Purdy was number one and Lance was number two, Donald was a distant third. But now Donald's back up on top again today, and not by a lot. I think it was they're all really close. I think I said you know Purdy was a cl- close second, and Donald uh, Lance was a close third today. So, yeah, I think really at this point, it's getting to be kind of a dead heat with those three. And it's very interesting that uh, Brandon Allen didn't practice today. So, like, maybe they agree, you know, like, hey, let's figure out between these three who's yeah. the best. And, like, you know, Brandon Allen, uh, he should be on the practice squad, period. There's there's no reason to uh, waste a lot of practice reps. I mean, you should have him so that if an emergency happens, he ends up having to play. He's had some reps. But it shouldn't be uh, an even switch. And I, I'm going to, I'm just noticing my lights aren't on. So I'll leave my mic on, but I'm going to uh, kill my cam while I do this. Yep. So I'll say that uh, training camp to me, it's, uh, we talked off, we talked off stream and I want to know if the chat agrees with this, but like it matters and it doesn't matter. And I think a lot of us who are fans of certain players will kind of take things and pick and choose what matters and what doesn't matter. Um, I didn't even realize uh, uh, Brock Purdy was going against the ones. So in a way, even though he's not himself um, and he's struggling and maybe he, you know, he's, he's efficient or whatever. I, to me, that it, it gives me a little more confidence. But for me personally, I never thought he would be ready if they say he was cleared by, say, like the end of August. Um that would have been the worst thing to do to ever force him to play week one. Right. And, and, and when everyone was saying, you know, maybe week four, six, whatever. So it's the same now, thing now. Right. So now him struggling and having issues and, and looking right. not perfect. No big deal. It, it like, we're not, we the the season's literally like what, a, over a little bit over a month away. Yeah. He, have, he huh. has plenty of time to become whoever we expected him to be from the end of last year. Um, Again, me and Ted talked off stream. I said, I wouldn't be surprised. And this would cause a absolute just nuclear fallout on 49er land. If they gave him a rest and he took a week off and stuff. I'm not saying that that's anything being reported. I'm just saying, you mad, can you imagine? Here we go again. This, this, I thought this is over with Jimmy leaving town, <laughs> but it's not. Um, Listen, I'll say this again. I don't care who the quarterback is as long as he wins. I am more comfortable with Purdy now, but that doesn't mean uh, Trey Lance can't change my mind and become, you know, the goat, you know, so to speak, and, and become the guy that we all thought he could be. So um, I'm not really worried about any of this until it starts affecting wins and losses. I'm not really worried about the preseason, to be honest with you, because most of our starters shouldn't play in the preseason. Uh, Trey should get a lot of work in the preseason. I really do believe that. Um, but who is he going to play with, though? He's not going to play with McCaffrey. He's not going to play with Ayuk or Debo. So how, it's going to be a tough, again, it's going to be a tough uh, optic for people who are paying attention to stuff to really get a good grasp of how like how much he's improved when he's playing against, when he's playing with like B-level talent. Um, but I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with everything right now. Um uh, Training camp, they haven't even hit their first game yet. They haven't had, they haven't had their first uh, padded practice with another team yet. So um, I'm, I'm glad that there is a kind of an even kind of feeling between the quarterbacks right now that nobody's really running away with it per se. Uh, it's a good problem to have, and uh, it could be a lot worse considering, you know, they're going against some of the better def- – you know, Brock's going against some of the pro- starting defense. So uh, all in all, I'm not really surprised at all what is going on. I am surprised that 49er Twitter is a mess and that everybody just so angry at each other and it causes like super big time division in the fan base. But are we really surprised? No, not in the least. I mean, not if you're around for Joe and Steve or Cap versus Alex or Very Jimmy territorial. Versus Jimmy versus uh, Lance, uh, you know, Purdy versus Lance is just an extension of that. Yeah, the winning thing, you know, it's important. Uh, but, you know, I'm kind of at the point where if we don't win number six, I'm going to be happy, unhappy with whoever the quarterback is. Just getting to the yep. NFC Championship game is not good enough anymore, especially now that we added Hargrave. Uh, you know, we still have the best group of weapons. We're going to have CMC for a full season. Um, 
You know, Debo supposedly in shape. Like, this team needs to win a Super Bowl quickly. Uh, as far as Purdy going against the first team, he is. But, um, you know, well, he sort of is. Um, on Tuesday, most of his um, completions were against Ambry Thomas. And Ambry, yeah, not only I is he you. not first team, Ambry is very likely to not be on any team come cut down day, at yeah. least not our team. Maybe he'll get yeah. picked up by somebody. But that guy is burnt toast. It happened again today. Jesse quote uh, tweeted it about like, you know, the sun rises and whoever's Water. on a- Amber, yeah, water's wet, bears pooping in the woods. <laughs> Sky's <is> blue. <laughs> yeah. Amber Thomas. A- Amber Thomas getting cooked, oh. uh, you know, on a regular basis. So, so that's not first team D. And the thing that I would also caution people about is that our defense is really, really, really deep and our weapons are really, really not. Uh, it's a big drop off after Ayuk. Even Jennings is not, you know, the same as those other guys, as Kittle, Debo, Ayuk, and CMC. Uh, and then especially after Jennings, and there's an, another big drop-off. Um, and our second team, D, has been incredible. Uh, right, well, Kinlaw has been incredible. And he's definitely been better than, like, Armstead or uh, Hargrave. And that's because those guys are vets. You know, they don't have to prove anything. They're already starters. But as of today... John Chapman tweeted that there was actually a five D lineman set and they pulled Kinlaw up to the first team D. I don't know how many plays that was for. I don't think it was every play by any stretch of the imagination, but at least for one play they did. So they're, they're starting to see that too. So that's my thing is like, and when, when Lance went against the first team T D he never had CMC. He still has not had right. CMC. So he had, you know, Maybe one play he would have a guy like Ayuk and then three guys that are, you know, I, I sometimes call them scrubs. That's a little bit mean or pejorative to say. But, you know, they're definitely second or third or fourth tier guys. Tay Martin, Chris Conley, um, you know, Latu. Uh, you know, they're either not great or they're very young. So, um, you know, like I said, keep in mind that uh, nobody else has really had the full run of the first team weapons either. So. I, and it kind of made me think about something too, which is, okay. you know, last off season, you know, why didn't, why did we have Purdy at QB three to start week one? If, if we pretty much most people agree he was our best QB in 2022, shouldn't he have at least competed for a QB one? So the two QBs did not to get hurt. So we, we could even find out what he could do. And part of the reason why is because he's on the third team, you know, those offensive weapons are weak and, and our D was very deep last year as well. So he just didn't look that good. Um, yeah, it's hard so, to evaluate. And, you know, some people say he got better doing the scout team. I'm sure he did. He said he did. Um, but how much? It's just like it's a shame that we don't know. It's a shame that we didn't have a real benchmark. And we're kind of doing it again this season with Lance, not giving him the same opportunities as what Purdy's getting. And, and it's just it, it irks me. I had this tweet where I said the same people that, you know, basically said, oh, it's, it, you know, we made a mistake, you know, handing Lance the starting job last year are like, hey, it's fine to hand Purdy the starting job this year. And I get that Purdy has more of a resume in regular season, but that would only be if Purdy was healthy and hadn't had this UCL. Now that he has, like, it's all up in the air. Like, he hasn't been the 2022 Purdy. And so at least until we see that, you can't just say, oh, Purdy's better in games because we don't know what he's going to be like in games this year. So yep, that we a, have to see that we have, we have to see more of that to, to, to come. It's a stretch to the conclusion that he's better in games and that Trey Lance is, uh, needs that they might cut him or so like some people were saying, or, you know, guys like Mike Silver, they're uh, oh. the guys who guys who are not at practice, uh, or if they are, I don't know where they are. Uh, I'll take all my fellow content creators that have been at training camp, their word over people that are searching for clicks. Um, real quick, I just want to say hello to a lot of people in here. We got East uh, East Coast Red and Gold Podcast. How are you doing, my friend? Just uh, David McNiner. Hi, Jess. David McNiner, one of my co uh, 49er uh, co-hosts on Monday with Niners Coast Coast. We have another one in here, Ty Alston. Um, I'm sure Brian Culp is up there in the top two. Let's see. There he is. Well, that's my, that's my other crew. Um, 
and and we've had a good time so far. I got my one of my uh, gaming buddies on here, who just loves to bust my balls about uh, Kansas City. So, but I love him. Uh, Bebop Jones, what's going on, man? He says, I hope Sammy Womack, the third number zero, shows up and shows out. Yeah, that'd be interesting. We need to know. We need to know something about this depth. Uh, he was in coverage on Debo when uh, when uh, Purdy went incomplete against Debo deep. So, hmm. in the first uh, series, some guys do better in actual games and practice. You just don't know until. But yeah, that was Jeff Garcia. I heard he was an awful practice player. Jimmy G too. Jimmy G. Well, yeah. Jimmy G. wasn't necessarily great in games. He was no, uh, but serviceable. He wasn't five time. picks in a row either, though. Right? Yeah, he didn't throw five picks in a row. Um, let's talk. Uh, Let's change the subject a little bit and go into the Nick Bosa contract. Uh, day seven of training camp, still no Nick Bosa. Are you are you concerned? I don't know if I'd say concerned, but I would, I would like to see him out there. I mean, you want to talk about the first team D and beating the first team D for Purdy? Yep. It'd be a lot, lot, lot bigger accomplishment if Nick John Bosa was on the field. Nicholas John Bosa, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, a li- I'm a little worried. Um, only because it seems like every time you have one of these holdouts and these contracts, it's always followed by an injury because guys are trying to get into game shape and, and, and get the rust off and they go way too hard, too fast. And then boom, someone sidelined with a growing injury or a hamstring strain or, uh, you know, whatever for me, he's not going to touch the field in the preseason whatsoever. Like it's not going to happen. And if they do, they'd be stupid, but I would love to see that first team defensive line, at least in a scrimmage against the Raiders and see what they do. I mean, <laughs> thing is Jimmy G, I don't know how much of a barometer that is. Cause he's like a sitting duck behind uh, an offensive line when it crumbles. So, but uh, I'm a little concerned, um, not concerned. Like he isn't going to start the season, but we've heard nothing at all. Like there's been absolutely radio silence. I think that's what really bothers me. Um, but we kind of figured it would be like this because it's it is a Bosa, and they want their money and they get their money. So, um, what's your walk away number? Uh, I think he's gonna make. No, no walk away number. Like if he wants this, we trade him. There isn't one. Forty mil. You're cool with forty mil a year. No. <laughs> That's a good point. I don't know if he's going for forty mil. He's gonna no. I don't think he is. I mean, it's what? Probably Aaron not. Donald is what thirty one, thirty one seven or something. Yeah, he's gonna go. He's gonna. I would say thirty. You could say I'm a lot younger than Aaron Donald. What's that? You could say I'm a lot younger than Aaron Donald. What do so you I'm mean? Well, well, yeah, true, and he is, and he's yeah. Has Aaron Donald never had a season like that? 18 and a half sacks. Probably. Yeah. He's had yeah, some he's pretty, re- he's had he some is really good. Uh, um, I don't know, man. Like I, I, I don't want to think of this team without having Nick Bosa on it. I just think that would be a big mistake. It's so hard to get edge rushers nowadays. And when you have them, they're n- if they were dumb enough to trade him away, they're not going to, there's just no way. There's no way they would trade George Kittle or Debo before they would trade Nick Bosa. I think personally, because Debo just- is, no, I just ahead. feel like at some point in some certain number, you like lock yourself into this sort of rookie QB contract thing. And it's like, you know, we, we keep saying we want a, a, a franchise QB, whether it's, you know, uh, Lance or, or Purdy or whatever. Um, but, you know, once you get that franchise QB, eventually you're going to have to pay that franchise QB. And if Nick Bosa is on some $40 million a year contract for five years, that, that you know, you may have to, trade them at that point, And then you have less leverage when people know you got to trade them. Uh, so I don't know. I just, I, I just was wondering if you, you know what I, I, I don't mean, think there's, it, there's a walk away market, number for everybody, right? To break I mean, the market by almost $10 million other, per year. Other than maybe Pat Mahomes, you know, that's, that might be the only guy that you'd be willing to do something like that for, just, because he could make right. average receivers look amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, dude, I mean, that's, Bosa will get 35 to 40 million a year, says Brian Culp. Bro, if they go $10 million over Aaron Donald, that would be a that's too much. Yeah, 35, I think, I think, is my ceiling. I think 35 too. will be as high hope, as they'll go. I'm hoping for like 32, 33 is really what I'm hoping for. 
I just want to get him. Or even ready. 31, 32, just a little less than Donald or a little more than Donald. 30, you know, it'll, and be, a, it'll be a little more. It'll right. Be 30. And then they're saying, I heard a, a radio show saying somewhere around 90 million guaranteed. That's a lot of money guaranteed. Uh, it's a lot of money. Um, I want to say what's up to Shasho really quick. Thanks for coming through. Shasho asked me on Twitter earlier if I was a fantasy football guy and if I'd be willing to do it. I was like, nah. <laughs> I've never done it in my life. I just I see people do it and they get it's like I can't I can't go against my own squad, dude. I can't pick against other 49er players. Or like you root for them but you're like, "Oh, you can only score 10 points, not 14." Right? Yeah. It's it's tough. Um I used to play some. Uh I I uh yeah, I was saying that I I don't play any leagues now. I just don't have time. Uh, I just got so into it for a while, and you know, like I won one, and then I I think I won two years in a row, or came in second and split the 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 final game purse uh, on both of them. One year I had uh, I drafted CJ two K and drafted Arian Foster, so that was a really good backfield to start, and then I uh, picked up Peyton Hillis off the waiver wire, and I had this like three headed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember he was a Brown, and he just he ran. He was on the cover of Madden, and then he disappeared. Yeah, I think he had like thirteen hundred yards or something. And I, I just had this three-headed monster that was just insanity. I got, I had like Matt Schaub as my quarterback, and just ruined people, even with the, Matt you know, Schaub, just a meh quarterback. Yeah. Totally meh. I remember when mm-hmm. the nine they thought the Niners would make a play on a guy like Matt Schaub at one point. Yeah, a desperate yeah. work for a quarterback. Oh, uh, yeah. David McNiner says 33 to 35 million a season is worth every penny. 100% agree, dude. Like I mean and I, I mean I mean too much is too much, but a player his caliber who who does so much by himself by himself, he had eight and 18 and a half sacks last year. I'm sorry. That that defensive line did diddly poo around him last year. So um yeah, I want to see I just want to see him getting camp. Once well, I don't care what the numbers are, to be honest with you, it ain't my money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I ain't paying him. And speaking of like you know Matt Schaub or Jimmy G or whatever, um, Jordan Elliott stopped by uh, the group I was with, and and staff came by after too. And um, we were all talking with Rohan, Jesse, and Raj, and um, and uh, freaking all star crew right there. Yeah, Splash Cousin Jordan Elliott was basically saying. God, it's so different, you know, today and the other day he came to camp, like how the quarterbacks all look pretty good. And it's not like with Jimmy G where you're just like, oh, God, what are we going to do this season? You know, it's going to be awful. And uh, what a different feeling it was. So that's the good news. I mean, you know, I think it's I think it's a three-way tie. And it's it's not a three-way tie because they're all sucking either. I mean, it's a three-way tie because they're all doing well. And uh, there's a lot of hope. I mean, I'm even starting to have some – Hope for Sam Darnold. I mean, you remember I was calling him Six Cent Sammy there for a while. I've dropped that. I can't call him that anymore because he's he's been playing pretty well. Um, so I have to give him some drop some respect on his name. Um, yeah, I still don't trust him in a game, but he, <laughs> yeah, he's right. doing well in practice, and it does count for something. It's like you said, it's not everything, but it's nice to see. Uh, I think what practice little- what you want is consistency. That can yeah. that can uh, trickle over to games, you know. It's not just putting the ball in harm's play. way. Yeah, not constantly making turnover prone plays. That's the one thing about you know Purdy's been struggling with a little bit. Uh, Pushing the, the ball, one, not not just dump dink and dunk. The one the thing middle. I heard from on the K, on KNBR from Matt Mayoka is, uh, oh god, my head just froze. My mind it just froze. Oh, is that um, Trey Lance looked really mechanical? his first couple of years. I said, it's his third year in this offense. And I think he's thinking less and just relying on the physical. He looks they more confident. He, he, they said he didn't look, they, he, he met Mioka said he looked like he was processing while he was playing. Like he wasn't just going free flow. Not like, instinctive. Yeah. And it dude, that everybody knows how hard the Kyle Shanahan playbook is. This dude jumped two levels. He went from a division two college to the National Football League and one of the best rosters with one of the hardest coaches to play for because of the offense being so uh it's just it's wordy it's uh there's just so much uh plays are based off of other plays which are based off of other plays to get other plays open you know um so 
for Lance to be looking a lot better this preseason or this uh, training camp than he has in the last two years is not a surprise. So I'm happy for him. I really am. And I hope if he gets his chance, I hope he plays really well. I hope he makes it a really difficult decision. That's what I was saying. I was on earlier with uh, Ryan Hensley and Rob Stats Guerrero on Ryan's show. I popped out uh, from the stands and just uh, uh, went live with them on my phone. And, um, you know, Rob was saying, you know, he just is not rooting for Purdy. He doesn't want Purdy to do well. He just wants Lance to do well. And I was like, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to gatekeep your fandom over it, but definitely I feel like iron sharpens iron. I want, you know, Lance to push Purdy and Purdy to push Lance and whoever it wins to be because they're just got got made better by the competition, not just because the other person fell off a cliff type of thing. Uh, no doubt about it. Real quick, uh, Jim Everett, the great in the house. He's talking about Matthew Dime Stafford. Um, I guess he's saying he's better than uh, than Darnold. Uh, but Jim Everett, the great, uh, who's who's Stafford throwing to today? I just saw that uh, Cooper Cup came up lame with a hamstring injury. I'm a little concerned about your receiving. I can't name now. one player on that team anymore. No. Other than Stafford, Cup, and uh, Aaron, Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald. Like, who do they have? Nobody. Who? Give me, Nobody. give me one name. Nobody. Nobody good. Bunch I hope that of, ring was worth it because you ain't going to see one for a long time after. It's going to be a lot. You know, they said. There's the 49ers gap between championships. <laughs> they, they said they were going to run it back last year, but I think they were just a, a year early. They're going to run it back this year, 5-12. and 12. There you go. Book it. Stenson Bennett. Yeah, I heard he's the second coming of Tom Brady, so. He's, uh, I call him Drunk Purdy because they thought they got dr- Brock Purdy, but he has alcohol issues. So, oh, drunk, drunk yeah, shouldn't have been our ring. Yeah, Niner fans, don't sweat him. He's just in here screwing around. I don't pay him any mind. Um, yeah, he's fine. Yeah, he's not, he's he's a troll. That's what he does. Bash, he, Bash blocked him off my channel one time and I let him back in. So, um, Brandon Ayuka here is having a fantastic training camp again. Diamador, or excuse me, Ambi Thomas seems to be the reoccurring theme with him. But I mean, overall, from what you've seen in camp, I mean, the, the report is he looks like he's going to have an absolute monster season. Do yeah. you agree on that premise? Yeah. Yeah. He's cooking everybody. Uh, yeah. But including, I mean, there was some um, of uh, Ambry Thomas. There was some um, of um, the even more underwhelming corner was Terrence Mitchell, uh, who's just sort of off the street. Uh, but Henry Thomas might be off the street soon. So, but yeah, Grant posted a stat today. He said, uh, Ayuk has 23 catches through seven practices. So he's getting about 3.6 catches, almost four catches a practice, which is incredible. Incredible. Yeah. He's, he just, he looks uncoverable out there for sure. That's good to know. And, his hands, he's just like magnet. He's, he might have one drop, but I mean, I think, yeah, I think everything else is just like, count it, count it, count it. Um, I know they asked uh, Mayoko too, if it be, be the possible for the 49ers to keep Debo and Ayuk. And he keeps saying it, it is possible. If, if they go the route of Brock Purdy as their guy and some, and, and unfortunately, I don't know what they would do with Lance, but like they have at least another three years to do stuff before they even I th- do they say two years before they can negotiate or three? I forget. I uh, not till after the next season after 2024, then you can negotiate. So, I mean, the Niners have, uh, we're, ta- we're talking about Purdy, right? Purdy. Yeah. After yeah. his third so, like, season, you can negotiate. The Niners have a, a, a can extend that window. And so uh, it's, I don't want the Niners to be the team that plays money ball, kind of like the Oakland A's. Um, cause that, it, to me, that doesn't make for championship teams that I feel like you're, you're just playing analytics and stuff, but I don't think the Niners are doing that. If they draft a guy and he works out, they're going to pay him. They're not going to siphon him off for more draft picks and try to recapture it with another player. The Niners do reward their guys, but you can't reward everybody. So as long as they're in this window with cheap quarterbacks, they're always going to have a pretty good squad all around. Um, the thing is. And, and and this is, I think, I think Ryan Hensley made the point is that you want that guy who necessarily you can have that maybe other parts of your team aren't all-star, but you have a guy, Mahomes is the perfect example of taking maybe suspect parts of your team and make them look way better because you have a quarterback that is just 
head and shoulders above everybody else in the National Football League. So that's the goal of all squads. I think I don't know if it's champion. You can win a championship that way. Maybe the Niners go against and buck the trend this year. Maybe they they win it and they prove that at least for this year it works. But I think having that guy will always be the thing over having a pretty good guy and a bunch of other stuff around him. I think uh, having a, a superstar quarterback is always the way to go. But there isn't a ton of them. I mean, there's not a ton of them in the league. You have about a handful. And then everybody else is in the same boat as the 49ers is always trying to figure out who their quarterback is going to be. So um, enjoy the ride while it's here, guys, with this squad and the ability to make moves and keep guys because uh, it won't be forever if they find a quarterback. So, uh, Running back, there's been some competition at running back. Uh, I heard that uh, Elijah Mitchell again was hurt today. So it's been a little bit of the TDP slash – Jordan Mason show. Jordan Mason's had some fumbles. I've heard. Uh, what was your What's been your opinion of Ty Davis Price, um, and uh, Jordan Mason? Because the 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 word on the word on um, Elijah Mitchell, I think, is an abductor strain. I just saw that Barrows reported it. He reported Mitchell abductor, Aaron Banks concussion. That's a bummer. Uh, John Feliciano's shoulder. That's really bad, especially paired with Jalen Moore below bone bruise. Well, at least Jalen Moore, it's not like a ACL or an MCL. Yeah, he's got a bone bruise. And I yeah. don't think they say Feliciano might just be a shoulder strain. Okay. That's good. But yeah, Elijah Mitchell injured, you know, uh, sun rose, sky's blue, water's wet. Elijah bear, Mitchell hurt. Poop, bear pooped in a the man, A man is so good, but he's like D Ford. He's so good. And it's like you just you have to make sure that you're watching the game really closely because it's only going to last like a like every time there's a uh, what do you call moon, not a full moon, but like when we have those uh, eclipse that's every oh. one seventy five years. That's like him when he plays. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> oh wait he played today sweet how many how many touches oh twenty oh he's going to be out at least six weeks now he played he had twenty carries you know and it's like jeez man trade him. I think they need to move on from him. We got Jordan. Listen, we got Kyle. We got Kyle Huszczyk. Yeah, we have, we have McCaffrey, Ty Davis Price, Jordan Mason. Go make a trade and go get yourself. I don't know, another running back off free agency, or I don't know, some other guy that you find. Dalvin Cook. I brought that up. Find Dalvin Cook. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's unfortunate. It's and then people would go, oh, you crack on him for being hurt. It's not that I crack on him. It's just, bro. We he's never root for injuries. We never root for it, but we're not going to ignore it either. Uh, what is it, Jim Everett saying? Sense and Bennett is better than all 49 or three years. <laughs> okay. Uh, send him over then. We'll see. We'll give you the we'll give you the evaluation. <laughs> no, you know why he's good. Their defense is ass. <laughs> they got nobody on that D. Come, yeah, like send them over. You're watching face plant into the number one D in the NFL. That's why. Yeah, it becomes it become Bose's bitch. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh, David McNair says, "I can't wait for the week two week two home game at Levi's in Inglewood." That's awesome. How sad Levi's is that? South, you, won baby. A, you won a Super Bowl. You won a Super Bowl and you can't even sell out your own home stadium. Like how pathetic of a fan base are you? Yeah. Like I hope that championship's worth it because you are a laughing stock. Like that Super Bowl that was there was a joke. It was just all about celebrities. No one cared about the game. Nobody cared. And so like this whole thing of like, uh, oh, this, that, and the other, like Levi South is essentially just Levi's in an enclosed dome. That's it. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. usually 60, 40, 49er fans. And uh, we, we own them through the regular season. So it, I, don't, I don't see anything changing next year. If anybody's going to beat us in that division next year, it's going to be the Seattle Seahawks. Because they're supposedly a lot better. But I'll believe that when I see it, too. Um, they they didn't the do much against... fix our run, D, though. Well, that means the Niners will still smash them. Uh, what is up, 49er-minded? Yes, we finally figured out what the problem was. Thank you. I talked to him late last night. 
I was, he was my sure. confidant. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Perez is in the building too. What is going on, everyone? Um, let's see here. Let's t- kick it over to uh, Edge Rusher. We signed the Taco Charlton uh, signing came a couple days ago. His first day he played really well. Um, are you still concerned based on like one on one reps and stuff like that? The Niners really don't have much pass rush. Uh, opposite of Bosa, is that still about? Is that because it, it it scares me? Drake Jackson's been looking pretty good. Kinlaw's been looking pretty good. Yeah. Um, Barrett, Alex Barrett had some really good one on ones the other day. Hey, real quick, just wanted to say if if people are on my channel, uh, make sure you pop over to Aaron's, give him a like and subscribe. Same thing if you're on Aaron's, do the same for me. Also, if you're watching on a PC, open up another tab, watch on both shows at the same time, or if uh, so you're we- on Twitter. Get off of Twitter and come to yeah, YouTube. Yeah, come on over here where you can comment and, and actually like and subscribe. Yeah, get off of Twitter. Twitter's just to let you know what's going on. It's not for you to sit there and watch the whole time. Yeah. Also, if you're watching on a phone, you can't watch too. But if you have a phone and a tablet, you can watch it on both devices. So <laughs> get those get those views up, folks. We need them. Yeah, come on, guys. You can't get yeah. 20 people in here? No, I'm just kidding. Kidding, 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 kidding. <laughs> kidding, 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 kidding. Uh. Yeah, so how, what's your take on the edge rusher situation? Uh, I mean, Drake Jackson's doing well. Um, like I said, Alex Barrett, not so much in, in team drills, but in the one-on-ones, Alex Barrett was crushing it. I think it was like Sunday or Monday, so maybe he's falling back to earth. He was just looking really quick and hard uh, to quick hard to block, I should say. Pause. Um, Pause. So, <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> um Ooh, ooh, yeah, ooh. I mean, I think we're waiting to see what we got, and let you know. There's no rush, and Gawkway's still out there. We could always trade for somebody like a Montez Sweat or a, a Chase Young, potentially. So, I think they're waiting to see what the bigger need is, whether the bigger need is defensive end or right tackle, because I think both of those could be, especially now that Jalen Moore got injured. Bone bruises can be pretty serious, so hopefully his yeah, is the they more can take a while. minor variety. Yeah. Um, but I like what I've seen so far. I don't think it's a huge deficiency. And like I said, we haven't even seen Bosa yet. So, I mean, I think with Bosa, Hargrave, Armstead, Kinlaw, and Drake Jacks, I think we're going to be pretty much okay. I think, I think we're going to be pretty dominant. Actually, I'm going to say, well, but I, I'm not going to count on Kinlaw. Right? So, you know, we, the way we talk about Mitchell, same thing with Kinlaw. Uh, but so far, at least this camp, knock on wood, he's he's been holding up and showing out. So. I gotta put. Uh, I gotta give my guy. Uh, where is he? Brian Culp. I gotta give him a wrench. Well, get. They got this stupid thing on here with the hearts and everything. Ah. Got Dion from Niner Gang podcast in the house too. Uh, hey Brian, it says that you are a moderator. Does it? Was it you that says? I, I'm lost. Uh, what's going on? I hit the like button on both channels, but Aaron and Bashar gave me, uh, oh, he wants a wrench from you, Ted. Oh, you got to give a wrench. A wrench you can catch a ball. Is that? Yes, or... exactly. <laughs> Dodgeball. Great movie. Um, podcast. Dion says, no, he- hell no on Chase Young. No, thanks. hundred percent agree. People are like, yeah, let's make the move for Chase Young. No. I already have he's one. Another, he's essentially Actually. another D Ford. If anybody, or, or I say Justin Houston. Give me a Justin Houston. Old, cheap, 10 sacks. I wanted Zadar. Oh, the other one would be Daniel Hunter is up for trade. He's pretty good. He's a 10 sack guy on, mm-hmm. on the Vikings, yeah, which is not a very Niners, good defense. What would the Niners have to give up? A fourth rounder, maybe? I don't know. It's, hey, I'd do it. I would, too. I mean, he's pretty good. I John wanted Z- Zedaria, the one I wanted was Zadarius Smith, but we already missed that action. So, uh, Dion says, uh, Yannick and Justin Houston. Yep, those are my two guys. Oh, those just, are my two guys. I just feel like Yannick wants a big deal for yeah, a lot of years. There's a reason a why he hasn't been signed. He, his agent, and him are on crack. After you know, <laughs> nothing against anybody who does crack, but you know, just you know, <laughs> he's on it because I'm more of a no meth way. guy. Personally, You're more of a meth guy. Yeah, <laughs> I I don't do any drugs, but I love soda pop. I'm you can tell by my my sunken and beady eyes and uh, my teeth falling out. You know, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Let's stay off that. Let's, yeah, uh, <laughs> let's talk uh, Colton McKivitz. How good does he look to you? 
Very good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, Colton has been, you know, not so surprising. We, we had a feeling he would be better in pass blocking. Uh, he's been, he's been pretty good. Uh, that's the consensus, everything I've seen and read and heard. Uh, he said he's held up really he was, well in one on ones. One on ones. I was just going to say in the one on ones, that was, that was one that was on the near field the other day, a Sunday or Monday. And, uh, yeah, we were all keeping an eye on him and he did really well. The surprising one was Burford kind of got abused, but, also, you know, in one-on-ones, like guard doesn't really play one-on-one. Guard plays in a phone booth between tackle and center. So if the tackle and center never get off the ball, guards out there in space, it's more like a playing tackle. And so maybe I'll make that excuse for him because he hasn't seen bad in team drills. But he definitely – Burford definitely was a surprise. Well, uh, some corners get cooked in, them. In, in one-on-ones, but they look really yeah. good in, in team individual because – I'm sorry if you're going against a guy that's got four three speed and you miss a jam. It's yeah. it happened to freaking. I mean, he was old and kind of past his prime, uh, uh, Richard Sherman. But how about the so, Niners says so with, been, the, with the meth dad joke? Ted, don't meth with that stuff. <laughs> but um, boom, Shh, pause. Well, well, um, well, uh, how about the Niners says that's fan, what I've been saying cool. all season. What's that? Yeah, I said he's a Rams fan, but he's pretty cool. He's one of the he's. Subbed to my channel a long time ago, and he's he's one of the best. Uh, him and Pale, Pale. If anybody doesn't know, Pale Time Pale is, is a great, yeah. Canadian Rams fan. He's probably my favorite Rams content creator because not only is he a great content creator, but he's a really good human being, God fearing human being. So, you know, whether you you're into that stuff or not, just as a human, he's really good. So, if you're a Rams fan and you don't know who he is, you need to know Pale Time. P a y o t i m e. Zach. Um, yeah. Zach, he's real. He's a he's a ginger like me. He says that's what I've been saying all uh, all season. Bring in Houston for exactly those points. Baltimore, yeah. what does it say? Paid him three and a half million last year for t- exactly. And, and to me, it's more of like you bring him in as an insurance policy if the young guys don't perform. But if he's in there and he performs, but the young guys perform too, then you're comfortable moving off of them him the the next season he's essentially a one-year rental he's insurance just in case guys play like poop but if they don't play like poop and he plays good and they play good then it's just you know it's you know it's it's all good right so um let's talk uh i want to ask you about jake moody the kicker i heard he's been fantastic Mm -hmm. so far i mean we haven't seen him in a game Mm -hmm. we're talking about practice Practice. Not a game. <laughs> uh, I've heard nothing but positive stuff about him from pretty much everybody. They showed a kick where he made, I think, was it 55 yards? That thing was good by another 10 yards. There was a wall behind it. Probably would have kept going. Uh, that's, you know, for a guy like, as much as we love uh, Robbie Gold, you know, that guy had absolutely a dead leg. You know, he he was forced to do kickoffs because Wisnowski couldn't do them and you know, our special team suffered. Now that doesn't matter because now I think teams at the way that the, the rules have changed, but essentially he's now becomes a very important piece of this team because they can essentially say, oh, we're within 50 yards. Oh, we'll go for it. We, he got a guy who can hit from 55. So he changes a lot of things for the 49ers. They could actually get points out of something. Instead of getting none, they get three. Um, what's your take on Jake Moody? Yeah, I think he just missed his first field goal on Tuesday. Yeah. So he's yep. doing really well. Uh, banging him, like you said. I mean, I think there was somewhere he had to take some off of him so that he didn't punch it over the wall out onto the road. That uh, kind of takes you back to Levi's in the parking lot. That's awesome. Um, and so, yeah, he's eerie he, at the same time if he's hitting cars. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's been booming them for sure. And uh, Somebody called him Legatron, uh, which it was kind of already taken by. Uh, that is a great uh, name, Legatron. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Brian Culp is all about Jake Moody. I think he even has a Jake Moody jersey. He um, does. And, I know he's got like four pictures on all four corners of his overlay too. So. Yeah, uh, he, he well because he some some people I'm not naming who they are gave oh. him just absolute crap. Because, you know, he was all for the move and a lot of people are saying you don't you don't do that. You don't spend draft picks. And, you know, I, I understand the argument because essentially that was a fourth round pick anyways, because it was compensatory. Right. So it was after the fact that was an after the fact pick. 
Um, and then if you think about it, the Patriots right after selected a kicker. Ryland, so the Niners Ryland. must have had some intel that they were going to have to make that move. So if we wouldn't have gotten them and we would have gotten the second guy, 49er fans would have been pissed off too. So in the, in the end, you can't win. You just make the move. Who cares? Um, Clown man, I haven't seen him in a long time. So what's going on, fellas? Long time. What's your thoughts on Taco overload or a three and a four sack potential? Good to see you. Congrats on channel success. Thanks. I appreciate that. He's one of my old oldest uh, sub subscribers. Man, I'm having a hard time talking today. Uh, I like that he signed on a Tuesday, so it was a Taco Tuesday. It was definitely Taco Tuesday. Yeah, his first day, his first game in or time in and practice, he, they said he had a. He had a really good time, so let's. He looked really good Tuesday. I mean, he was, he's never really been as successful today, either. So, What's so I mean, when we're talking about Drake Jackson and stuff, then you got to talk about Taco too. Yeah, uh, had, had some Cowboys fans come at me about it, like, "Oh, who's going to tell him? Who's going to tell him?" And I was like, "Who's going to tell you that you know Chris Cassert got Arden Key paid, Ebicom paid, and Charles Amenehu paid." And then I had some Seahawks fan come at me and try and say, well, I just thought didn't get paid. You know, it's been two years and the, the, the salary we have to shave with the camp. And I'm like, what the F are you talking about, bro? He got he got two years, $12 million from us. He got three years, 24 from the Colts. He got a $9 million signing bonus that was, uh, you know, is basically almost as much as he got from us in two years, he got oh plus whatever his base was for this year. He got eleven and change in twenty twenty three, almost as much in twenty twenty three as he got in twenty one and twenty two from us. So like, I was like, dude, just go away. You're 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 making an insane comment to try and say that this isn't a great raise that we got. Well, from they, I think I think part of it too, Ted, is that people aren't forty nine er fans. They don't know the. The overarching success of Chris Kacarek and guys who don't do anything, you know, that underperform and then they come to the 49ers, he gets a hold of them and all of a sudden they become a household name and then they go somewhere else and they go back to sucking. So (laughs) it's pretty much they have a certain way that they've rushed the passer and they have a certain way that he coaches. He's an absolute psychopath, but he's a psychopath in a good way. Like that's what you want as a pass rush coach. You want a guy that's going to pass out from exhaustion or losing his his gas from his breath because he he's screaming so much. So just don't get don't don't have a brain aneurysm. That's all we want. None of that. A lot um, of expletives. You could hear him at, at camp. He's cursing. Yeah, he's got a very dirty. He's got a very dirty mouth. Um, yeah, for sure. Don't bring that's the right. kids to training camp. <laughs> uh, what you think about um? Uh, I, I this is an older topic, uh, but the Frank Gore front office move. I thought it was a great. I know it's old news, 49er fans, so you don't attack me. But I thought it was great. I think Frank Gore is one of the greatest 49ers of all time. I think he's a Hall of Fame running back. He's number three all time. People say, no, he's not a Hall of Famer, really. If you go into the top three in rushing yards in NFL history, you're a Hall of Famer. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care. Yeah. He's never, no. he, oh, he was never the number one this. And the, doesn't matter. Top three all time rushing yards, Hall of Famer. That's it. That's, that's my not- argument. And that's not the only one, too. We also hired uh, Deshaun Goldson from that same era. This, yeah. The hard-hitting safety. A lot of people like to say Dante Hittner, but Goldson was the one who really laid the lumber of those two safeties. They Hittner used to had give, the name they used that rhyme. They used to get baptisms Gold- on the field. They used to get yeah. baptisms on the field. <laughs> Goldson was like... It was more of he, one of fire. <laughs> he, he, got, he got in, you know, just before it was too late to really... Uh, tenderize people like that anymore uh so nowadays he'd just be getting flagged left and right and center but yeah i like both of those moves i'm glad we're bringing back some people from the harbaugh era the you know our, our only other glory days since basically the 90s essentially or early 2000s let's say with uh with jeff uh garcia. jeff garcia that another, defense another, was another ginger though. buddy of yours <laughs> it's another no i people i used to have a garcia jersey back in the day and I used to wear my hair really short. So my nice. nickname, a couple of the guys that I grew up with was, he used to call me Garcia. That was my nickname. So for your taller, is he only like 6'1 or so? He, uh, not, I may be six foot. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a lot bigger. I have a bigger frame, yeah. uh, wider yeah. shoulders, bigger, just, er, I'm girthier. Pause. Uh, um, speaking of that, speaking of that, uh, somebody today called me short round. And I was like, oh, it's a 26 foot short. short. Yeah. 
jagged. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I am round. I get that. I'm not going to argue that part. But uh, I'm, I'm 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 more of a I'm more like evenly distributed with my weight. Uh, but I'm go. definitely not skinny <laughs> either. Uh, yeah, Some people like, have on. weird shapes. They He's look like tennis, short? You know? what, what is this? Well, Maybe on a basketball team. Probably five. Yeah. The guy's probably five three. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. He's probably like some little guy. And he's like, he's all mad because he's so small. He's got to call somebody else little. He's He's got issues. That, you know, that was that character from uh, Indiana Jones, right? Short round. Wasn't that the, wasn't that the, like, the, the little uh, kid? Short, was no, that was a uh, hook. He was a fat kid that could roll into a ball and then, like, use, they used him as like a bowling wow. ball to knock people over. What was the one from like the later Indiana Jones, uh, like Temple of Doom, and uh, anyway, what? Because he wasn't round at all; he was just short. The little anyway, I don't know. Uh, yeah, anyway, little kid. Um, I, he said that was sixteen thousand yards on the spot for Gore. I think that, I'm not sure. I have to look at that. That's that's impressive. Yeah, I mean, he's up there top. He's like top three yards and top. Or, and this is a guy you blew essentially blew both knees out in college, mm-hmm. and the still and then Florida. barely missed any games as a 49er. Um, McCrary Ball, how's he looking, Marcelino? I heard he's had a pretty decent camp. Uh, I, I think he's been good. DFF's been good. Uh, D Winters picked off Trey Lance today. Um, you know, uh, it Fred seems to and- be a competition for. The- for that uh, third linebacker spot. Do you think uh, anybody has a, an edge on it? Do you think that's Flanagan Foles or Odom's job to have, or do you think uh, not Odom, Odom's guys? the safety uh, oh, Odom. or Burks. Or yeah. Burks. Yeah. I mean, I, I got the feeling about Oren Burks uh, from OTAs and mini camp and sure enough, he was starting, but yeah, I think a lot of people feel like any of those guys could, uh, it could be Burks. It could be McCray ball. It could be, uh, Maybe D. Winters if he keeps going strong. Um, Demetrius Flanagan fouls potentially, but he just has been all around so many times. I just can't imagine him not being more of just a special teamer guy again. Um, but yeah, I think I could see any of those guys doing it. I haven't heard much of, uh, from Jalen Graham. He was strong in OTAs and minicamp and in training camp. I can't remember seeing or hearing anything about him. Um, so, but yeah, we got so many people. We'll probably have to trade one of those guys away to, you know, anyone you stick out on the practice squad will get nabbed. I think out of that group. One of the guys that we actually traded any, away uh, actually got hurt with the Broncos today. Jonas Griffith, he's out for the. Oh, year. I'm sorry to hear that. That's a bummer. I forgot exactly what he injured, but yeah, the the Broncos already have like two or three players out for the season, and they have. Oh yeah, Tim Patrick did his Achilles after doing his ACL. That's brutal. Yeah. Sounds like I the Forty ers <laughs> Uh, like Clay Thompson, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, there's been talk of Kinlaw having a great camp. He's I know right. that he said he. And it's, it's funny now. Uh, I listened to Kasurik, and Kasurik sounded like he was kind of standing up for him, almost in emotionally, about just how much he's had to deal with with injuries. Now, I personally don't like the guy. I think he's kind of a toolbox, but uh, but. The, I deal with it knee injuries and I'm a lot older than him and I can understand how much it can hamper normal life, let alone athletics where you got to be explosive and strong. Um, but it seems like this is the first year in a long time where his knees feel really good, at least for now. Um, and it, and it's, and it's paying off with how he's looked so far in camp. The thing yep. is the translation it's translated to the game is what I really would love to see. Um, I don't know if he's playing hard because he knows he's going to be a free agent next year. That might it's be part of his part motivation. Of uh, they said he looks a lot slimmer and in shape. Uh, you, so you say that he's looked pretty well, pretty good so far. Yeah, outstanding. I mean, if Ayuk is the best overall and maybe the best on offense, maybe Kinlaw is the best on defense. I mean, uh, I was gonna say about the linebackers, Fred and Dre have been hitting a lot of people and starting fights basically by uh, hitting, hitting you. You know, they're you're not supposed to tackle running backs, and they were tackling Elijah Mitchell a lot. That I mean, could be why his abductor got pulled. Was from being tackled to no, it's a real shame. Uh, and and I mean, then you know, and then people s- stood up to them, and there was a fight. And you know, this is a, and Fred did it last year with Ayuk, where uh, he and Ayuk got into a couple fights last year in training camp. So, yeah, you uh, want to protect I, your own guys, you don't want to, hurt yeah, them. I just that, that bothers me. Um, but yeah, as far as Kinlaw goes, uh, really good, 
really, really good. Just knock on wood. Hope it, hope it continues uh, for a whole season. And I hope, you know, he plays well enough to get paid. And, you know, even if it's on another team, um, you know, he could be that, that missing piece that we need to get us home to take six. What, um, what's your take on, uh, and we're going to wrap this up very shortly, uh, wide receivers. I heard that Ronnie Bell's done okay, and Chris Conley's kind of been a little bit of a standout, at least early in camp, maybe not uh-huh. so much lately. Do you think the Niners yeah. might have themselves something in the back of that depth chart with uh, Bell and Conley? Conley seems like a, like one of those guys. He's kind of like one of those stories of like a because I remember a couple years ago we had that one guy that did really well in camp and then uh, he ended up he's on the Dolphins now. He's a real fast guy. I forget. Sure, what like, Surefield Trent Surefield. Yeah. What's your take on uh, Ronnie Bell and uh, most notably Chris Conley? I hadn't heard much from Ronnie Bell till the other day, and then he got a couple of three catches. Uh, so I was glad to see that. Yeah, Conley, you know, that might be uh, Trey Lance's favorite target here. Tay Martin, uh, I've gotten a lot. So yeah, uh, I would say that's the order Conley, um, Tay Martin, Ronnie Bell right now. Do you think what's his name is the odd man out that we signed last year? Uh, the kick returner? Um, can't think of his name right now. Oh, Ray Ray? No, no, no. Uh, I think, no, I, I think still Ray Ray. I think Ray Ray's ahead of all of them. Yeah, I'm talking about for the last sixth position or fifth position. Well, Ray Ray would be uh, fourth after Jennings. And, um, yeah, so I think for the fifth position, it would be like Conley, Tay Martin, Ronnie Bell. I think Ronnie Bell went up on the practice squad. Interesting. Seventh Seventh round pick, I think you can expose him without losing him. And then you got the tight ends. How have the tight ends looked outside of Trud? Braden Willis That's is good. getting a lot of targets. Latu's looking pretty good. Latu's getting good separation. He's had some drops issues, but uh, welcome to know. the team. That seems yeah, like but, it's an issue with all of us a lot of times. Not like Warner, you know, and and I think Warner and Dwelly's days are numbered. Warner might make it due to blocking, but I think Dwelly's days are numbered. Uh, and so far, Braden Willis has looked a little better than Latu, but. Uh, both good. Both good. How about the Niners says Conley is one of the best run black and wide receivers in the league every year, graded 80, 80 over the last four seasons. Something to keep in mind. That is de- definitely. That's if huge. You're gonna be, if you're going to be on this team, you got to know how to block. You could, you could secure a job on this team on special teams or being able to block on offense. If you can't do either, you're pretty much beat. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, special teams is huge. And, and this running game is the, it's the sole you know, that's the, the focus of our offense. You have to, if you're not willing to, to give it on offense, as far as the blocker goes, you're probably not going to see the field. That's why Juwan Jennings is so loved and coveted. You know, he, he might not be that great as a receiver, but he's, uh, you know, he plays through the whistle, sometimes a little past it and pisses people off, but he's a great, great run blocker. He's super physical. He's like T.O. without speed, if you ask me. So um, that's pretty I mean, much it. I'll go ahead. Great. With Braden Wallace, I just, I, you know, Grant said basically he hasn't seen a rookie tight end targeted as much as Braden Wallace since George Kittle. Uh, Bash said Braden Wallace four targets today. And the other day, I can't remember if it was Monday or Tuesday, Braden Wallace had four catches uh, and, nice. and had the most catches of the practice. So um, he's, he's playing really well. Uh, so, again, a lot to like. But go ahead. You were going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say that pretty much for us, that pretty much does it. Uh, anything going on other in camp that you've noticed and uh, what's going on with your channel as far as your content goes for the rest of the week? Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm kind of blanking on camp at this point. Uh, <laughs> it's got a lot of thoughts running through my head. Maybe something will come to me as we wrap up here. Uh, for, for my channel, um Definitely got uh, later today, I've got uh, Pete Burge. Uh, actually, it's not later today. It's in about 10 minutes. Uh, I've got Pete Burge from Niners DNA on TED Talks Ball. We had a Thursday show earlier in the season, and he had to step away for uh, some family reasons, and now he's back. And so uh, we're trying to re-get going on Thursdays every week. It's 2.45 my time, and I think 7.45 a.m. Sydney, Australia time, where he streams wow. from. On Friday, so he's actually he's, he's tomorrow in in Australia, and then um, and then tomorrow like, at three uh, got balling with Bash and Ted with the wonderful Mister Bashar, and then nice. uh, Niner Nate uh, hooked me up with a ticket for camp tomorrow. 
So he's Steve. going to join us. We're going to do a three-way at three tomorrow, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, ball and bash Ted. And, and for tomorrow, uh, nine or Nate joining in. That's awesome. Uh, Saturday, I think, is the only other stream so far this week for me. Uh, me and Wayne Breezy, 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, 8 p.m. Pacific time. Working on another one. I'm trying to convince my guy Raj to see if he's willing to do a stream with me this week. Uh, he is a busy man uh, outside of just football, so I don't uh, take it personally if he says no. But uh, cross your fingers. I'm going to beg him. I'm going to do my best to make him give in. But uh, if not, I will see you guys on YouTube on Saturday with the one and only Wayne Breezy on my channel. Uh, Wayne's a great guy. He's the one who said to me, you know, if we can get a schedule down, we could do a, a weekly show. So I might go from three to four, and that's all on Wayne. Wayne, I... I wanted it, but I didn't want to beg for it. Wayne put it out there. So who knows? Maybe we'll uh maybe we'll have four shows and then when Raj and me do the the thing, when we do the we well actually no, what if you I forget. I'm slow. But yeah, that'd be fun. I, I'm looking forward yeah, to it. But uh I'd watch. All right, cool. All right, we're gonna let Ted get out of here. Everybody have a great rest of your evening and afternoon, and uh we'll talk to you guys later. We'll see you next Wednesday. See ya. Peace and go night.